Let's get you to the analytical lab. Hello again, everyone. We're getting close to the midpoint of the semester. Today, we're going to do the spectrophotometric determination of iron. So your unknown is going to be a vitamin tablet like this. It'll be in the desiccator again in one of these jars. You're going to take your tablet and you need to dissolve this. To dissolve it, you're going to put it in six molar hydrochloric acid and you're going to put it on the hot plate. But of course, as that hydrochloric acid gets hot, fumes start coming out and evaporating. And it turns out those hydrochloric acid fumes are bad for your lungs. So we're going to have two hot plates in the hoods and about six or seven of you can make use of those hot plates. So you can start making the standards or you don't have to. You can start prepping your unknown and then go to the standards or vice versa. So I'd say six, first six, seven people, start in the hood, start boiling your tablet. As they get done, if you're in the middle of making your standards, stop for a second, get your tablet, and put that in the hood to prep. We'll have six molar HCl in one of the hoods, get your smaller and lighter flask, have the tablet actually in there already, ideally, and then add the HCl to that. And that'll slowly start to dissolve the tablet, but we want to increase the digestion, so we're going to put the heat to it. It says to do this for 15 minutes, you're probably going to do it for less. The really important thing is to make sure that you do not evaporate this to dryness. So regardless, if it's only been on there five minutes and the tablet is all dissolved and you've lost like half the volume of your liquid, take it off before you lose the rest of your liquid. Once you take it off, leave it in here to cool so it's no longer fuming. Once it stops fuming HCl, you can bring it to your bench top. That's how you're going to do the tablet digestion. For the iron solution itself, we'll have the ferrous ammonium sulfate hexahydrate in the balance room. You're going to mass out approximately 0 0.1405 grams. You don't have to be exact. Be close to that. Note the actual mass so you know the actual concentration. Maybe you're a little bit above that. Maybe you don't make a 40 part per million solution. Maybe you make 41. That's fine. If you make 500 milliliters like this, this is actually plenty of standard for seven or eight or nine people. So if there's a person at your bench that you all trust, one person at your bench could make this stock solution and everyone from the bench could make their standards from this. You add just a little bit of sulfuric acid to this to get it to dissolve. Um, your graduated cylinder isn't actually gonna be able to measure out a half a milliliter. What I would do is just add eight or nine drops of that concentrated sulfuric acid to that. This will get it to dissolve but it won't be super acidic, which means later when you have to bring the pH up, it isn't gonna take like 500 drops of your sodium citrate. It'll hopefully only take like 30 or 40. Once we've got our solution completely dissolved and ready to go, I am going to pipette 10 milliliters of this into a beaker. I have that right here. I would take that, pour some of this into a clean beaker, pipette up 10 milliliters of that, transfer it exactly 10 milliliters to a separate beaker, ideally something not very large, so that we can test the pH. There. You'll have pH meters out. The first person that uses it will need to calibrate it, but you'll introduce the probe into the solution. You'll see the pH is probably something like two, and that's where your sodium citrate solution comes in. So we'll also have the sodium citrate in the balance room. The instructions for this are how to make a liter. You take 25 grams of this to make a liter. You definitely do not need a liter. I would make 100 milliliters. So you scale that down by 10, 25 becomes 2.5 grams. You can make that in your 100 milliliter volumetric flask. And then when you're all done, transfer that to a separate container or containers. And again, that 100 milliliters, that's probably enough for three or four people. So you could make that amongst four of you and share that, partition it out into a few different containers. But make sure you free up your volumetric fl flask later for making your standards. And then probably about five or 10 drops at a time, I'm gonna add that sodium citrate to here. I'm gonna mix it, make sure it's mixed, and I'm gonna check the pH again. And you should see the pH start to slowly go up. And once it's around 3.5, and just needs to be close to that, so 3.45, 3.6, 3.7, that's good enough. Once you find out how many drops it takes to adjust the pH, you'll take a separate 10 milliliter aliquot of your iron solution, introduce that into your volumetric flask. Now we know for me, I needed 36 drops of the citrate to bring that pH up. So now that I've got my other 10 milliliter aliquot of iron in here, I'm gonna count out 36 drops into there. When I do the iron solution that's half as much, when I, I'm only gonna add five milliliters of my stock to this, it's gonna get half the number of drops of citrate. So this is gonna get 
18 drops. And I'm just gonna keep scaling that down for the two milliliters and the one milliliters. I've got my 10 milliliters of iron in here now. I've got my sodium citrate in here. What I recommend doing, we're gonna need to add the, the hydroquinone and the finanthroline, and that's gonna form that brightly orange red colored complex that we can measure then in the spectric photometer. You have three volumetrics. What I recommend is doing this all at once. Don't make one solution at a time, do three at a time. So figure out, here's my 10 milliliter, here's my five, here's my two, have my pipettes ready with my iron, and I'm gonna add the iron to each one, 10, and then five, and then two. And then when we go to the next step, adding the hydroquinone and the finanthroline, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, you, can you pause it? I just realized. All right, so then we've got iron in each of these. Now instead of doing just the phenanthroline in one and then just the hydroquinone in one, I'm gonna add it to all. So here's my hydroquinone, I got my two microliter pipette. And I'll just add this to one, go add it to the next, and then the third. Like I said, making three of these at a time, I'm gonna do it kinda like an assembly line. And then after I've added the hydroquinone to all three, I'll go ahead and add the phenanthroline. If you have, um, a three milliliter pipette, you can use that, or you can use the one in the two, or this is an excess, so you'd also actually be fine to you'd be able to get away with using a graduated cylinder as well. Once I add that, I should see that brilliant orange red color appear, and then go through boom, boom, boom. I, I, I got something to do, I gotta go do boom, boom, boom. And then now that I've added everything to these, I'll go ahead and dilute to the mark. You'll notice, of course, you have to make four standards. You have to make a blank. Your blank is going to contain everything but your analyte, so it's gonna have everything except the iron. Your blank's gonna have one drop of sodium citrate, and it'll have the same amount of hydroquinone and phenanthroline that your standards do, and then you'll have to use the volumetrics after that for your uh, unknown as well. So what that means, since you only have three volumetrics and you're really gonna need to make at least six solutions, is you're gonna have to, after you've made three of these, go ahead and transfer them. And that's what these poly bottles are for. So you make your three, your 10, five, and two, have them you know, filled to the mark, completely dissolved, homogenous, and then go ahead and transfer them to these flasks. Rinse up these three volumetrics and you're ready to go. Now you can do your one milliliter and your blank. Transfer those to these, and now you've got these free for your unknown sample. Once you've got all these, make sure you have everything ready, your standards, your blank, and your final unknown solution, and then you can run them all in the spectrophotometer. You can't run part of them and then come back to it later. You wanna run everything on the same instrument at the same time, or you can't really do a comparison. So now we'll go over to the spectrometer. We'll have probably three or four of these out around the room, so you shouldn't really need to fight for them. You'll need to adjust to the correct wavelength. You've got that in your lab manual. There should be cuvettes by all the spectrophotometers. What I would do normally is I would rinse the cuvette with the solution that I'm about to fill it with, and then I would fill it with that solution. But since we're doing the demo, we'll just go ahead and fill this up. There is a blank button here, zero absorbent. So actually you'll start with your blank. You'll open this up. You'll introduce your blank solution, blank out the instrument, and then you'll go run your standards from low concentration to high concentration, and then finish with your actual uh, unknown solution. So introduce the cuvette in all the way and close that. And now I can see that display went from zero absorbance to 0.613. I'll have my notebook and I'll record each of these. I'll write that 0 0.614. I'll empty this, rinse it with the, the next solution, put that in, whatever the display reads, 0.312. I'll record that and just move through all of those. Once you've made this solution, this should be relatively stable. So if you can't get this all done in one week, this is a two week experiment. So if you get all of your standards done and put in the, the poly bottles and store it in your cabinet, that's good enough. And then the following week you finish your unknown and you can run everything on here. So there's lots of places you can stop and sort of store things and carry it over to the next week. Um, that should do it. Hopefully this is helpful and you've got your lab manual to consult as well and we'll see you on lab day.